Hello! I never quite know how to start the videos. I figured hello is a good way to start. <laughs> so I'm back, Junebug, for another true crime time. Because as I've probably mentioned before, at least true myself, that I love researching true crimes, just learning stuff. People be yelling outside, what? Get out of here. Sorry about that. <laughs> but um, I like to research true crimes and I don't know what to do with the information. I just want to keep learning, but I have no one to speak of this learning with. Genesis, the husband, doesn't really care. Um, <laughs> I and my friends, one has babies, so she's obviously very busy and then the other one doesn't really care for true crime. So my option for talking to someone is you guys. So feel free to comment about stuff. <laughs> but also thank you for the love, I guess. So sure, love for my last true crime about the lavender scare. That almost has like 400 views, guys. <laughs> I lost the sunlight, so good thing we have a ring light now. Watch. Thank you. She's scratching feverishly. Power of the ring light. Okay, not terrible, not terrible, but now I have the, the ring in my eyes and it hurts. But this, much better. I don't know if it does anything for my appearance, but you can see me. Also, no bip and flip. Figured it'd get a bit festive. Got a little candy corn from my grandma and a little scarecrow guy. They said hi. <laughs> but I suppose we should just dive right in. Okay, one disclaimer. So doing research for this case, I obviously do more than just like one article or the Wikipedia page. I do, I look at a lot of different sources, see if there's any snippets I missed or if there's things that are just straight up wrong. When I was doing research for this, one, not like a ton of information, but two, a lot of differing facts from the sources. None that are groundbreaking. Either way, they had the same like general outcome, but just so you know, if like I get a fact wrong, I, I think I just pulled from what I thought was the more reliable source. Not quite sure, but here we go. <laughs> so today we are talking about the Aqua Tots. And this happened on May 6th of 1953. And they were obviously like tots. It's a brother and a sister. This happened in Miami, Florida. Why I said it like that, I don't know. And again, the silver lining is, I always hope it's a silver lining, is it is a solved case. Now, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his last name. But Russell G, it looks like Tongue? Or is it Tonga? Tonga seems like the easier pronunciation, but it looks like Tongue. So maybe I'll just go Tungay if it ever comes up. It's T-O-N-G-A-Y. Tunga? Tungay? I could look up a pronunciation, but it could be different pronunciations for different people, like different families. Anyway, Russell G. Tungay was born probably <laughs> October 18th of 1916 in St. Louis, Missouri to George F. Tungay and Catherine Knorr. Um, not much is known about his upbringing except that he was a sprint swimmer in high school and he was also good at other sports. He didn't like excel at any in particular. I guess maybe the sprint swimmer. S swimmering. <laughs> he excelled at being a sprint swimmer maybe the most. He wasn't like bad at anything but he wasn't like whoa. You've, you know what I mean? Just a very middle ground, just kind of there. Uh, and he would later be a swim coach at pools and summer camps. So again, obviously not bad, but he's not like going to the Olympics or anything. So along the way, he got married and his son, Russell Jr., was born in 1944. Um, could not find any info on his wife, really. <laughs> but sadly, a year and a half later, Russell Jr. would pass from multiple brain hemorrhages, which is horrible for a little person to go through, a little tiny baby. 
then soon after that, Russell Jr. was born again. Not the same one. He, he, his nickname is Bubba, so we'll call him Bubba. So they had another son and then just Russell Jr. again, which I thought was kind of weird. But I guess he just really wants a Russell Jr. in his family, I guess. The original Russ. So we're going to call first baby Russell Jr. And Russell Jr. too. Russell Jr. Jr., we're going to call him Bubba, his nickname. And in 1947, Kathy was born. It said the 22nd, May 22nd. Uh, different sources said different things. So take that with a grain of salt. So Russ really wanted his kids to be the best at swimming. And I can understand if you're passionate about something, you were pretty good at something, you'd hope your kids would maybe follow in your footsteps. Um, but he started teaching them about swimming and how to swim before they could walk. Uh, said Russ would sprinkle water in their faces from the time of their first baths, which I feel like first baths, depending on the family, of course, it's the first week or two the baby's there. It's a very, very little baby getting water just spritzed in their face. And at six months old, he would just turn showers on them so they could learn proper breathing, aquatic breathing for being underwater. That's terrifying. It said, I don't know if these are true, but it said that Kathy could swim 20 feet underwater at 10 months old, which I started walking at 10 months and that was fast. This little lady's going 20 feet underwater at 10 months old, supposedly. And at a year and a half, they, both of the kids, Bubba's a bit older than Kathy, maybe the max of two years older, but they could swim a quarter mile a day. And then they were swimming five miles a day at two years old. And again, unknown if these stats are true, but I could totally believe it considering he was sprinkling water in his like weak old baby's faces to try to teach them how to swim immediately. And said both of the kids were bronzed, blonde, wide-shouldered, and had their ribs showing just from continuously swimming and being outside. But it said Russ would feed them protein baby food even when they're no longer babies. So when they're like five, he's still feeding them baby food because he said they'd keep them lean so they could swim better. Don't, don't worry about your kid's weight, how lean they are at five years old, please. Unless they got a real issue, but these kids are like shredded, I'm guessing. Now, in 1950, Russ staged a swimming stunt, oh boy, for the kids to swim 22 miles in the Mississippi R River. Hello. She has not seen the baby candy corn or the scarecrow up close. Oh. Okay. Ignore her. But Russ set up this stunt, quote unquote stunt, for his kids to swim 22 miles of the Mississippi River from St. Louis, where they're from. And he followed in a boat behind them. Just chill. We were just chilling until I got out the cords and you go ape shit. No. So Russ was following in a boat behind them. And he gave up swimming. It's the children's turn to swim. I really hope this was down river, like the river was flowing so it helps them swim. I really hope so. Not going up river. But at age two, Kathy swam five miles of the river, and then Bubba, age four, swam the entire 22 miles. This is where I'm really hoping it's downriver. Because that, I'm not saying it'd be easy, but it's definitely easier than trying to swim against the current. And your dad's in the boat with the yelling, go faster! But the stunt was recorded by reporters and was a big introduction to the kids for the nation. So Russ announced after this, since the stunt went so well, Genesis is home. <laughs> Hi. You've made appearance in my true crimes now. <laughs> I've been in your <laughs> gaming vids before in the background. <laughs> anyway. So after the stunt, Russ said his children would be swimming the English Channel, which is if you don't know, it's between England, hence the name, and France. One of the busiest channels in 
the world. I don't know if it was at this time, but now it is. It's very busy with boats and stuff. Not a place for, um, I don't want to say toddlers, but that's what their name suggested. Because it was around this time that he named them the Aquatots. Oh. Ooh. Which is kind of a cute and catchy name. But um, it gets tainted. <laughs> so when Kathy was four and Bubba almost six, Russ took them to England to have them swim the channel. Uh, thankfully, British the British were horrified and said no. And then um, Russ, the turbaned little fella, went to France and they also said no. Thank goodness. <laughs> so no, the children did not have to swim the English Channel. I forgot how wide the English Channel is, but more than the 22 miles, they already had to swim in the Mississippi. Also, they'd be dodging boats and um, garbage and <laughs> sea creatures. So when they returned to the USA after the just sad defeat, the Russ located, relocated the family to Florida where the kids could keep performing. And also, I feel like you should have done that sooner if you wanted them to be swimmers, because where were they swimming in Missouri? Uh, it gets cold there, and he had them swimming every day, so hopefully he took them to a pool. In Florida, the kids, around this time when they were at their most heightened fame, they had a role in Esther Williams, or Esther Williams' movie Skirts Ahoy, which was made in 1952. They have a smaller role of... Um, I think they're in, chilling in the pool with, I think it's Esther Williams. She's just swimming around and they're like, oh sweet, let's swim together. Something like that. I, I quickly read the synopsis. <laughs> but the Aquatas was kept performing and doing stunts until, sorry, until May of 1953. Both Bubba and Kathy are really good platform divers. It said that Bubba was more so. Generally because he was older, he had more experience, and he, it was just safer, I guess, as he got older. He's still really young, mind you, under 10. On May 6th of 1953, Kathy attempted a, I don't know what this is, but it says a one and a half layout dive from 33 feet up. And she messed up, as it happens. Professional Olympians at their prime can mess up. But she messed up and landed right on her stomach causing to have back pain right away. So she basically did a 33 foot belly flop. Whew. Which belly flops hurt just normally. Like if you're just falling into a pool from like the edge of the pool that can hurt. I can't imagine 33 feet of belly flop. But she started having back pain right away and she was hurt and was just done for the day. But afterwards, Russ, the dad, very responsible of him, hint the sarcasm, took them to a, a different pool where they did conditioning five days a week. I'm honestly surprised it's not all seven days of the week. As it was said here that Kathy was still in pain, obviously. She was crying and did not want to go in the pool, which I can't blame her. And a lifeguard there said she was bruised all over and could tell she was not feeling well. And I probably wouldn't either. I wouldn't want to swim or jump off a diving board for a long time after that. But Russ made her eat some, it was called baby soup, which she ended up vomiting at the pool and then made her get in the pool. And she didn't want to, which she did anyway. And she cried the whole time she swam, it said. Which is horrible. But they didn't stay long on account of Kathy's crying. Very inconvenient for Russ. But when they got home, Kathy started convulsing, having seizures, and passed away shortly after. She was almost six years old, which is insane. That day went from, based off of this account, zero to 100. And I can't imagine what she must have been feeling. One source said this was her birthday, which is horrible. But I don't think that's true. Again, this is the weird with the sources. So after an autopsy, a homicide detective Chester Eldridge stated it appeared Kathy was brutally beaten. 
and this get it gets a bit rough here. But she also died from a ruptured intestine, internal bleeding, and an infection. So the infection definitely did not happen from the belly flop. I don't know if the rup ruptured intestine and internal bleeding could. I mean, it sounds like it could, but just not good. So because of this, because of the bruises everywhere in her body, not just like on her belly or her trunk, or her front, where you belly flop, they were everywhere. Russ was charged with second degree murder. And he insisted the dive is what caused all of it. The bleeding, the infection, the ruptured intestines, the bruises all over her body, her convulsions, which I get the dive was probably not great for her and it did some damage but this seems like a lot for the dive to just do that and she's gone later in the day but it was also brought to attention how Rush Jr. died his first baby the brain hemorrhages when he was about a year and a half old it is believed he got those from Russ hitting him when he wouldn't hold his breath correctly in the bath. Like he would keep pushing the baby down to try to swim. Baby didn't like that because he's a baby and Russ would hit him for not being like perfect enough. There was also some sources that stated he would beat Kathy a lot. She would cry a lot like he didn't like her crying in public that would embarrass him it said. So he'd like just whack her, which I don't know how that helped the situation. That would just make me cry more. I didn't really hear anything about if he did anything like that to Bubba. But he was also forcing his child at four years old to swim 22 miles in the Mississippi River while he rode in a boat. But instead of convicted of second degree murder, Russ was instead convicted of manslaughter. Which it was probably, it didn't say, but I'm guessing it was probably the criminal criminally negligent manslaughter where he wasn't like out to obviously kill Kathy I hope not but risking her life that way and trying to do these stunts when obviously she's five she should not be doing these I think I'm gonna say no don't don't do that when you're five it ended her life way too soon and it said I heard different sources Three different sources said three different things. One said he was just forced to do 10 years of hard labor, which I was like, well, that's bullshit. He needs a harsher punishment for that. How about he's made to do everything he made the kids do? Another source said he went to a penitentiary for 10 years, which seemed more like it. Um, again, not long enough, I feel like. But then another source said, <laughs> I can kind of believe it. He was in the penitentiary, supposedly for 10 years, but he got out after six for good behavior. But it said his first couple of years there, he attempted suicide a few times. He tried to escape a few times. He was just a horrible person, which he was kind of horrible before, but you know what I mean. So I don't know how he got out for good behavior. I don't know if they were just sick of him or he, he got his act together after that first year too. So believe what you will, 10 was in the sentencing and unfortunately that's kind of where this ends kind of cut and dry horrible um, not much is known about again his wife so I don't know what happened to her I think she divorced him and remarried I think I could be totally wrong Bubba the only thing the only thing I could find about Bubba I don't even know if he's still alive was that Bubba was a lifeguard later in life all I know that's all I could find so if you're alive good job um, that's all I could find <laughs> now it's said that when Russ supposedly according to the one source Russ got out early and he went to California this one article said this and married a lady stole all of her money and ran away with it so she annulled him and then lived the rest of his life in obscurity we don't know what happened to him i assume he's dead now considering he was born in 1916. and from the pictures 
not a healthy looking man. Which is hypocritical. Looks like he just ate all the children's food while he fed them baby food. But yeah, that's, that's pretty cut and dry. That's it. That's what happened. Um, must be sad for, well, lots of people involved, but Bubba being the only sibling to survive into adulthood. That's a horrifying thought and a bit suspicious, definitely when you look at it. I definitely, I obviously don't know what happened, but I do definitely think Russ tried to vicariously live through his children and he took it way, way too far, especially for poor little Kathy. I just don't know if Bubba just had, I don't want to say it easier, maybe he did, but his, him and his body were just able to handle this a lot better than Kathy. So that is it. That is the sad fate of the Aquatots. I'm rambling. But as usual, I'm going to have the graves that I can find listed below for you to leave a flower if you want to, or nice words only, or you can do research more on the family. Which sometimes it'll say like, for Kathy, it'll say dad was this person, mom was this person. Not always, but if you want to learn more, you could maybe look that way. I think I tried and I could not find Russ. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed? Question mark. I hope none of you are like, yeah, death. But you, you know what I mean. Hope you enjoyed the appearance from Genesis. He finally made an appearance because he came home before I finished recording. Well, hope you all have a great week or month. It usually is until I see you again. So stay safe and bye-bye.